Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to our final series of today. I'm joined now by Blaze, who was casting over on the Beyond the Summit 2 channel doing the other matches. We both both just casted six straight games because we've had an epic day of We Play Dota 2 action. We've had all our best of threes go the full three game distance, and we're here now in our final series to decide who gets second place in Group C. Dignitas managed to 2 1. KP in the opening round and then managed to 2 1 Cupad Red Pandas in the winner bracket final. So they are now going to be going through first in the group. But we've got Cupad Red Pandas seconds. up against KP to decide the second and third place of this group. I haven't seen much Five of, of KP. How have they been playing, Blaze? Um, a little bit shaky in some scenarios. I mean, they have made a couple of questionable decisions in certain engagements, but as a whole, they've been showing a lot of progress. They're a relatively young roster, bringing in Eternal Envy most recently. They're, they were a very Romanian roster prior to that. But nevertheless, they, they're showing that they are just practice, practice, practicing, because they're improving their synergy, improving their coordination. Every single time they run a try lane, if they've been contested, they usually just win outright, and if they aren't, then of course uh, Eternal Envy just farm, farm, farms away. Uh, they've been drafting a little bit stagnantly, so hopefully Q -Pand Red Pandas doesn't have them all figured out just yet, or they might be able to kind of just counter draft against them, but Right now, uh, getting the gyrocopter through is something that we haven't seen in the previous matches. Either way, they have a strong showing, and I think they'll give uh, Q-Pad Red Mandas a run for their money. Have they been playing a lot of the Bane? Because first pick Bane is something I wouldn't really mm -hmm. expect from KP, I guess, but maybe yeah, it's something you've I've been doing. Uh, it's uh, pretty much, generally speaking, they couple the Keeper Light and the Bane together almost every game that they get the opportunity to do so. Okay. Uh, but of course, with the Ezalora Band out here, they're just going to pick up the Bane and put that on Zizu, or Zizou, I'm not actually sure yeah. how it's pronounced. Either way, he's been playing a really good Bane, and it has a lot of potential to lock down heroes like the Chaos Knight and such. Yeah. I think the big thing for Qpad is they can't actually have watched any of KP's recent games, and vice versa. Because all these games are overlapping at the same time, you don't really mm -hmm. have time to see what your opponents do. Maybe you have a friend or someone, your manager, watching their games on their, on the stream or on Dota TV, but the players themselves haven't been able to watch the other games going on. So this is the first time seconds, these two teams are going up, up against each other in this group. And uh, we'll see what they look to do. Cupad, I mean, this has sort of been their bread and butter heroes. They've been doing a lot of CK Leshrac. They've been running the dual lanes here and there. Uh, they've been playing a lot of Gyrocopter themselves, although that got snagged up by KP. And then the Magnus, mostly been played by Select, although it was once played by Sing Sing earlier in the mid lane as well. Interesting, interesting. So yeah, there's a lot of different uh, ways to run those different heroes, but the Queen of Pain, throwing that in the mix, does uh, help out a little bit, specifically with dealing with the Chaos Knight's illusions. Those uh, Phantasms dish out a ton of damage when they actually get rolling, maybe an armlet to back them up, uh, propagating the strength through, but yeah, doing a little bit of AoE magic damage will go a long way in limiting how much the CK can output, and of course you already have the Flag Cannon and the uh, call down, providing some suppressing fire there. So if CK only is doing single target damage, I don't feel that he's going to be as much of a threat as he otherwise would be. Yeah, I feel, I mean, there's a lot of things to deal with the illusions with the Queen of Pain and the Gyrocopter AoE. You've got cooldown, flat cannon, then Queen of Pain with the Scream Sonic Wave. So it's it's going to come down more to the laning, remaining. I feel, for Q-Pad to sort of maximize the, the use of this CK pick. They want to dominate Five the laning stage. Remaining. Ideally, they need to be winning at least two of these lanes. And the best way to do that is maybe to run some dual lanes, have two heroes mid, and then have two heroes in your safe lane. So you have two heroes getting a decent amount of farm. But the question is always going to be, what heroes do you look to go for with that? Leshrac... Mostly being played by Jerex has been such a key hero for Cupad when they get an early start. They really start to snowball out of control. They get a lot of early towers with the Edict build, and his split earth initiations have just been fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of potential there, and of course the Chaos Bolt's a pretty easy setup in that scenario, so I wouldn't be surprised to see CK Lesh uh, run a dual lane. Do you think they could possibly run at mid to try to shut down the Queen of Pain, or do you think it's more going to be just a uh, safe lane or something to make sure that they're going to find farm on Waga? They've done it more often than not in the mid lane throughout today. It's against the Queen of Pain this time around, which is a hard, slightly harder hero to kill, but hey, if you land the Chaos Bolt, the Split Earth, and you're pretty much set to go. If you chain stun those properly, you get a two, one three, four second stun from Chaos Knight, anything other than a one second stun. And Queen of Pain's been harassed a bit, Five you can probably get the kill. Remaining. So I think they stay with what they've been doing, which is running that dual lane in the mid lane. I think the main problem with running Chaos Knight as the safe lane farmer is he can't be your one position carry. You need a secondary carry. You've already got the mag, so if you're going to be running someone else as your secondary carry, it needs to be some sort of a solo mid. Maybe something like a Templar Assassin, but if we don't see some kind of high damage solo mid, it's probably going to be a dual lane mid. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, sure enough. Uh, as far as the bans coming out, Keypad Ran Pandas wisely banning out a couple of supports that can benefit a ton from the Bane's Nightmare setup, specifically the Lina with her Light Strike Array, but also the Rubik has a, a large potential to counteract the Magnus, or he, honestly, he's great to steal from any of these guys. If he can steal yeah. a Chaos Bolt, if he can take a no-cast animation delay Split Earth to the bank, yeah, he'll be able to use that very effectively. So uh, Rubik in general, a great pickup 
Uh, and of course, will fit up that supportive role. And along with that, the Lena being taken out. Since they already have the last track, they don't have to worry about that. Uh, the only other thing that really, as far as like hardcore setup, tryline supports, you could see maybe a Jakiro. Um, but I would see that more as a pick slash counter pick uh, to kind of take it away from Cupid Ran Pandas because a Macropire in a uh, ultimate from Ursa, uh, from the Magnus, would be really big. Uh, I said, or, or, kind of slipped my tongue there. Uh, Venomancer banned out because uh, Kaipi actually runs a weird little strategy here where they actually pick up a Venomancer in an Ursa. Yeah. And uh, the Gyrocopter could be pl picked up in a uh, completely different role. Maybe they could go aggressive trialing, I don't know. But in that sense, Venomancer banned out just to take that off the table. Yeah, it does sort of limit what some those carry options coming out of, of Kaipi here. Gyrocopter may be a hero we see go into Eternal Envy's hands, but I think more likely maybe we even look at the support Gyrocopter here because with all these supports banned out, three banned out by Q-Pad in Rubik, Lina, Venno, and then Shadow Demon Chen banned up by KP. Ten They're sort of limited remaining. for support, so maybe you just say, hey, we'll put the Gyrocopter as a support, look to grab some Five kind of carry for that tri lane. They run at quite a bit of PL and Anti-Mage, KP every now and then, I feel, at least in the past when I've watched them. I know Eternal Envy loves Anti-Mage. It's his favorite hero after Ursa, so maybe that's something they even look to fall back on here. Sure enough, sure enough. Uh, yeah, I'm really not sure how they want to proceed with the draft. To round out their lanes, I, I think they need one more solo hero prim uh, primarily. I mean, I know you're kind of talking about 2-2-1. Two, two, Definitely Magnus could be that one. I just yeah. don't feel it would be as uh, survivably viable. So they go with the Sand King here. And uh, I, I like this hero pick uh, in a couple of different ways. We don't really see him as much outside of the Southeastern Asian scene. But nevertheless, Sand King brings a couple of things to the table. First of all, they already have their Chaos Bolt to set up things. So the first couple of ranks in Burrow Strike being rather low distance distance isn't going to be that big of a deal on top of that so he's going to just add in stun on top of stun on top of stun bolt split earth a burrow strike whichever order they prefer to put those in but along with that when he starts getting up to level five level seven they can actually start roaming and put out aggression uh, where they can burn down people pretty quickly and finally the fact that all the spells are very aoe centric so when you get a good reverse polarity you're able to capitalize on it by popping off that epicenter and just dishing out a heck of a lot of magic damage yeah the amount of team fight and also lockdown they've got is insane cupid and they're going to grab the antimates themselves so it's probably going to be wagamam on the antimates which puts chaos knight into Sing Sing or even Select's hands, depending on how they want to lane this. It's, I guess, a couple different ways you can do this, but Antimage, it looks like, will be in the 1v1 matchup against the Dark Seer. So maybe we see the offensive trialing with Select playing the Chaos Knight, put Sing Sing on the solar mid mag, because nothing against the guy, but his mag last game, Select, was sort of, did miss an RP or two, which sort of cost Cupad quite heavily. And KP, what do they look remaining. to get in return? If they want some kind of hard care of their own, they've got to start looking towards the Phantom Lancer, Five I feel. Seconds remaining. Sure. I mean, that's definitely an option. That's something that, as far as uh, pickups for Eternal Envy, I mean, technically, you still could run that Gyrocopter but otherwise yeah the phantom lancer is that potential pick everybody's joking about the ursa uh like over and over and over for him to pick it up because he's like the only one that's ever drafted it and then empire picked it up to snipe it away from him the very last game that i was able to cast for him but anyways uh still technically viable but i don't think he really has the supportive setup for it so in this sense there are a lot of different options but i would see an alchemist as being possible oh, yeah. if they can get the BKB early or something like that. I think they need B uh, KP need BKBs all over this game. You look at mm -hmm. four four big heroes with AOE with well, three with AOE stuns. You've got the CK with the single target stun and all um, this AOE damage from Magnus, Sand King, Leshrac. You've got to go BKBs, Queen of Pain, maybe yeah. even first item. Gyrocopter as well, you've got to think BKB, but if it's a support gyrocopter, getting that BKB up becomes a lot harder. Sure. I just okay, so they're actually going for a kind of a no carry lineup other than the gyrocopter. I was talking about him, but he's just probably transitioning that over to the number one role, and they're going with that. They're going to have a lot of AOE damage suppressing down and hitting everybody incidentally, but I don't feel that they're going to have that as much single target burst. They're going to rely on getting great team fight initiation, uh, maybe uh, like the vacuum into. Uh, Earthshaker, of course, getting off that ultimate, the Echo Slam. So combining those together, if Bone 7 takes up a Blink Dagger, which he commonly does, they're going to have actually a really great teamfight potential, but essentially they're just butting heads here. Teamfight versus teamfight. Uh, as far as Anti-Mage versus Gyrocopter, you're going to see Anti-Mage do more in the mid-game as far as single target damage, and uh, of course, Gyrocopter is always going to be hailing towards that AoE sense, but uh, in the late game, I definitely think Eternal Envy has the most potential with the amount of damage Flat Cannon can do with some hard damage healing items. Yeah, I, I like. I think the Gyrocopter is sort of a more well-rounded pick. Whereas the Antimage, it's. I like Antimage strategically because he can he can come to fights early depending on items he goes. He can go for the split push. He can play more sort of team fight heavy. There's a lot of different ways you can sort of play him depending on mm -hmm. the situation. You're never really in a bad situation for an Antimage. But we're actually going to see Sing Sing 
handling the anti for the Q-Pad side. I'll quickly introduce them. We've got the Q-Pad Red Pandas, Mini playing the support Sand King. We've got Jerex, as always, playing his Lashrac. This guy's absolutely godly at hitting Split Earth. Wagamama playing the CK at the mid lane will be that dual lane. And then finally, select on the mag. And I like what it looks like we're going to see KP do. They're going to punish these dual lanes by running an offensive tri lane. Yeah, it's going to be high potential there with or... Eternal Envy piloting up the gyrocopter. Of course, Zizu on his relatively signature Bane. Uh, they'll be probably heading up top there to put some pressure out there. Whereas Bone7 is currently positioned in the mid lane on uh, Darkseer, which he plays quite frequently himself. So it looks kind of like a 2 1 2 strat with Highlighty yeah. down here on bottom with the Earthshaker pseudo supporting up a rise on the Queen of Pain. Yeah, int they're not. I'm about to say, I mentioned the offensive trial, and they've actually got only two at top lane, or maybe even. I can't imagine them putting Eternal Envy as the offlane solo here. They are going to have the Bane up there as well, but... They're, they know Antimage is top. They, yeah. they know he's going to be all by himself I think there, they're almost. anticipating an offensive trialing, and they're thinking it's going to be dual lane versus Antimage. The problem is, this is just going to take an easy rotation from the support sanking towards top. He's even going to be going for a first blood minute, it looks like. He's smoked up right off the bat, rotating around looking for this, this, this dark here at mid. Yeah, the problem with that is Burst Strike is such low range yeah. at rank 1. 350 is not really going to catch too many people off guard. He does actually get a D ward successfully off. He sees this Observer and can take that down, but not really worth the smoke of Deceit usage. So he's going to try to stay hidden for the moment. But as long as Bone 7 doesn't pass the steps threshold, he's actually going to be perfectly fine here. Yeah. The thing is, even with with or without sanking here, Darkseer's position where he is. He's going to see this gank coming in. He's already level 2, the Darkseer. And if he plays this right, he shouldn't get killed. No, he walks right into sanking. He's, he's pretty dead. At yeah, pretty dead indeed. Um, Only, we actually see the debuff. Yeah. Burrow Strike has connected, so I mean, from yeah. there, there's not much to do. Is there enough damage to kill him, actually? It's only level 1 heroes. I actually think he may be okay. I... That's a lot of stun. I mean, you already yeah. have 2.1 uh, from the Burrow Strike. You have it an extra 2 seconds on... from Lash Rack. Yeah. And then, of course, Waga, 1 or 2 seconds. It's, it's a we'll two see seconds how much stun. damage the Castle does. Yeah, it depends on the it's damage from this. Yeah, there's enough. Surge comes a bit late. There is enough damage there. Split Earth at level 1, there's of course, doing the same stun duration at level 1 as it does at level 4, which is sort of the big thing there. But normally there's a lot of harass coming out from Earthshaker onto this mag, it looks like. Queen of Pain actually blinks in. There's no screw up as well, which is the big thing here. Mag maybe thought he had a 1v1 lane, and he hasn't got level 1 in skewer, which makes it really hard for him to get XP here. Yeah, that's a reasonable like uh, assumption. I mean, when you see a Queen of Pain down bottom, you don't expect it to be relatively supported. Uh, Piloty kind of roaming on our route. He did pop off one Fisher, and it doesn't have any clarities to get a second one online early. But nevertheless, I think Arise is not only going to be great in a 1v1 matchup because Queen of Pain always destroys Magnus in mid lane, but in this situation with the uh, Earthshaker, they're actually going to be able to delay that reverse polarity quite effectively. Yeah, and Queen of Pain beats Mag mid, and you beat Mag in the side lane even worse because there's so much space where you can chase him down without having to worry about walking into the tower. So it's an even harder matchup for the Mag. Combine that with the Earthshaker being here, who's going to keep the creeps pulled back also get some decent farm and xp himself this is a very difficult place for mag to be he'd want to probably go for a fast bottle but he's he's nowhere even near that uh -huh. this is disrupting the pull though that's one big thing yeah. here pilati was going for a double single pull mm -hmm. and with that he's actually just going to end up pushing out the wave two creep waves will collide together the tower has been getting some hits on the dire creeps and as such select is going to find some much needed experience in just a moment yeah really nice disruption there and he almost almost lost it Earthshaker almost got the double pull off but he he does manage to uh, prevent that from happening and now this wave is going to push out like you say mag will get some xp so keep an eye on the the, the, the other lanes as well darks here the beauty of this this solar mid darks you can push out the lane farm it using a Iron Shell, and then you can go kill this small camp off. It's very efficient. The Radiant Side Darkseer is just something which is so, so powerful as far as a farming tool. And against an aggressive dual lane, you farm the lane, and then you go where it's safe, which is your own neutrals to farm. Mm -hmm. Well, Sing Sing at top lane. He's also struggling to farm. Enfeeble early on on Zizu. I saw, I, last time I saw him play this Bane, he did a very similar thing against a lone druid. It was very early in Feeble points. Pick off on mid lane, actually. They got the. He was really, really aggressive in his position. He pretty much was pushing out on the wave, had the iron shell going consistently, and yeah, they were able to bolt into the stun and just kind of set it up perfectly for Jerax there. So cleaning it up nicely, they get that nice kill. There's also some aggression going out on the Magnus down on bottom, but uh, nothing more than just harassing him down so he has to force out the salve after the dot expires. Yeah, Envy farming pretty well at this top lane. It's, it's the Radiant side, KP, with the, the highest CS on the Queen of Pain as well as Gyrocopter. So despite the two kills going the way of Q Pandas, they're not farming anywhere near as well as KP. And we can see the gold almost dead even, even slightly in KP's favor, despite two kill advantage to Q Panda. So this is a good start for him. The problem is, for Q Pad, they need to get some, they need to get some, some gold and farm on, on Sing Sing at the top lane, which he's just not really finding right now. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, uh, one thing about Kaipe's setup right here is that although Bone 7 might be like stacking up neutral camps very effectively, one thing that he's... Actually, he missed that too. But uh, one thing is when he continuously pushes this wave with the Iron Shell, he always puts himself at least in the river, if not up on the dire steps. So in that position there, as, as Jerex keeps on roaming top, uh, top and mid, top and mid, over and over and over again, it always makes it so that when the rotation is at the right time, they're going to be able to come out on top, and therefore Wagamama has a huge experience lead uh, with the Darkseer only just now hitting level 5, which is something you don't generally expect from these two. Yeah, the two kills as well, helping get, give him a lot, big boost for his XP. Split Earth, not going to go for it. He had the haste rune, Jerax didn't go in for the kill, and right now it looks like q Pandas have stabilized. They're focused, they got the early kills, and now they look to focus on some more farm here. They get the Sand King protecting the Antimage at top. Maybe they're looking for some kills. They've got Leshrac coming in. The haste has one off. Can he get in range for this Split Earth? Yes, he will. He even hits two with it. Envy almost walked into that one. Envy. On the run now, needs to be careful. Mini's still chasing, he gets the tower off him, and there's gonna be a second stun coming soon. Can he cut him off? It looks like he will. Envy takes a fall. Sankey may pay for this with his life, but it's well worth it anyways. Mini, he's blocked off. He's gonna wait this out. He may ex- Yeah, such a long duration fisher. Right. I don't think he can get out. He Sandstorm attempt, but he was still in vision range. If he waited things out a bit longer, he may have actually waited for the fissure to, to expire, but either way, a, a really good trade. Killing off the Eternal Envy Gyrocopter there. Nice little pickup. Mm-hmm. And not to mention that there's Smash in the bottom lane. So, I mean, Select has been forced back to base. He just now got his bottle. And, I mean, this is five and a half minutes in. Your side lane usually gets bottle around two and a half minutes. It's pretty much a second courier run. In this situation, he's just now picking it up and making a long walk of shame back down to the bottom lane. So, I mean, he's surviving, but just barely. It's it's really not looking good for him. And the problem is, the Earthshaker being there early... Nope. Mag would do a lot better against Queen of Pain, wouldn't be struggling as much if it wasn't for the Earthshaker, but once Earthshaker gives the Queen of Pain the lead, Earthshaker can, can just go mid, go top. You don't have to actually protect the Queen of Pain anymore for him to win this lane. He wins this easily now in a 1v1, considering the two-level advantage he's got. More smoke coming on up. Uh, Mini and Jerax really want to make something happen, and honestly, Eternal Envy's position makes it so darn easy. I mean, he has phase boots, but still, they have the perfect uh, wraparound gank opportunity. Yeah, it looks like they will be able to find... Envy once again. This is going to be his second death of the game if he's not careful. There is Pylai Dai coming on the Earthshaker, but I feel like it's going to be too late. Envy, look how aggressive he is with his laning. I love the way he's laying against the Antimate. Problem is, he's being ganked up. Sing Sing could have taken a fall, though. Earthshaker Fisher is going to be able to keep him alive, and Envy may actually be able to fight his way out of this one. No, the Sandstorm damage is enough, and now they're going to try to chase onto the Earthshaker. The well-timed Burrow Strike followed up by a Split Earth. This is going to be the death of Pylai Dai. No additional TPs coming in. Pylai Dai goes down. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, luckily, Mini didn't get blocked in by the creeps there. That would, that would be really, really bad for him. But nevertheless, I mean, that could have been worse. They still got the kill on Sing Sing, they which is... Mag at bottom, meanwhile, KP. Mm -hmm. Finding opportunity. Yeah. Uh, Zizu didn't... It doesn't look like he caught a glimpse of it, though, because uh, his experience is still barely at level 3, not even level 3 yet. Yeah. It looked like Queen of Pain cleaned up that one. Queen of Pain now up to level 7. Mag picks up, well, his first death of the game, but it, it feels like it's a lot worse than that with Bottle, Stout Shield, no boots yet, and we're seven minutes in already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't died, but he's certainly not been finding much for himself, just been very deprived on that lane, and it doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon. Now, do you think at this stage that the Magnus should just opt for the jungle with the Empower? Well, he hasn't got any points. If anything, he'll be farming yeah. more with just Shockwave Bottle Crowing. I don't think you, sure. could, I don't think you want to go back for the Empower now, because you're, you're going to be anticipating these mid-game teamfights where you want your maximum damage output, which is going to come from Shockwave, but I agree he may have to go back to his own jungle. Mm -hmm. I like how Zizu is actually finding his opportunity for experience. I, I said yeah. he was almost not even level 3, and now yeah. he's moving up towards level 4, and he's going to get another couple waves while Queen of Pain is away. So Zizu's going to be able to pick up that Fiend's Grip at a relatively good time, but all the same, that does mean Select's finding his experience, and i got to say, the reverse polarity might be even scarier. Yeah, and Queen of Pain with first Oblivion stuff already out, probably going to just TP back to... Maybe even TP top, look for another pick-off on the Antimate. He really can go absolutely anyway. He's not going to TP anyway. He's going to walk on out. The beauty of walking out means you're not committing to any lane. If there's action that breaks out at top or bottom, you can still TP there. Sure. He walks to the closest lane, which is going to be the mid lane, which is currently empty. So Darkseid heads to the jungle. Bone 7, where's he got now? He's got level 8 bottle. Probably going to be the one picking up picking up the mechanism Smoke for again. KP. Smoke again. Yeah. Jerex and Mini really just want to... They see where they're wounded. They see where there is a little bit of a chink in their armor and they want to repair it. They're going to come on down bottom and look to gank up on poor, poor Zizu, who's just yeah. trying to find some farm. q love to do this. They go for a lot of early game smokes. They probably use two, sometimes even three smokes in the first ten minutes of the game. Top lane, it looks like Radiant Team are camping out for, for, for out the anti but they've already got Zizu. One stun, two stun, and Shockwave finish them off. Select gets the kill as well, so that's going to be his boot. 
And Arise, he's he's here, but he does not want to be taking on these three heroes. If they chain stun him, he could go down. Mini's actually going to be going back in. One stun, they're going to get a second stun as well. It's not... Ooh. Oh my gosh, big mistake there coming. Queen of Pain should have known there's three heroes there, but he still went in for it. Yeah, that was just a complete mistake, honestly. In that kind of position, you have to realize they're at the ready. And, of course, just a rank 3 burrow. They committed the epicenter, which they didn't need, but they're happy to use a cooldown like that to make something happen. Whether it's wasted or not, they still get the kill. Note. Such a key here is Queen of Pain, who is already starting to start, start snowballing. Level 7, with Tread's Oblivion staff at 8, eight, eight and a half minutes in, is absolutely ridiculous. So, a very important kill for the Q-Pad Red Pandas. Yeah, she would have been just monstrous. If she had gotten the Orchid uh, as rapidly as she was heading towards it, it would have been just a really, really big deal. She would have been, completely, like you said, snowballing out of control, and Ooh, I don't way. think they had much answer. They found Queen of Pain again. Shockwave wow. dead. These supports, level 7? You've got a level 4 Burrow Strike. Having support to a level 7 at 9.5 minutes in is such a huge advantage. And while it comes from all these kills they're getting, kills gives you XP. And uh, we're going to see well, Radiant side. They, they're slightly winning on the farm wars, but the XP right now that these supports have, I mean, Q-Pad have so many options open to them. They can set up kills all around the map, and the Radiant side, well, gold this early on is great, but if you're going to be having your supports fall this hard behind, it's not really worth it. Yeah. And in this position here, I mean, if you look at the levels right now and think of if the script was flipped, if it was uh, level 6 and level 4, if it was like a level 6, level track, level 4, Sand King, what would that Sand King be accomplishing with his yeah. low range of initiation? But uh, in this position, he's in a great spot. It's a completely different story. He has Arcane Boots, he has a maxed out Burrow Strike, and he has probably one of the best setup stuns for them at this stage in the game. So they're feeling great. Waga has a Haste Rune. He is maxed out at 4-4, and he's ready to pretty much go for any kill in the book. They're very gank heavy now that they've gotten this early. You can TP any where that there's action happening. It's looking to be bottom lane. There's going to be Mag going in. He's got an RP. Not going to use it just yet. He wants hit more than one. Here comes Earthshaker. RP three. Oh. He, I thought he was only going to catch two with that, but he caught three. ES with an Echo Sam will look to turn things around. It looks like Cupad have overextended despite a really nice RP. They just didn't have the follow up damage. I think Split Earth was on cooldown. Well, there was no mana for it, but here comes Waga oh, He's got the haste through. Four seconds on a rise. There's going to be a Darkseid Wall of Replica, but here comes Sand King. Sand King, Burrow Strike, hits Dark... No, misses Darkseid. Looks like the vacuum kind of made him miss that one. Magamam is still chasing. He's got Magic One. He will have another stun coming in soon. Earthshaker. He's got absolutely nothing, but looks like Wagamama are too afraid to chase. Maybe couldn't check the Earthshaker's mana in time. We'll back off. So Q-Pandas. RP was nice. No follow-up, but they still managed to get an alright fight there. Yeah. Jack's positioning was questionable. The, the RP was so darn good, but they really didn't have the positioning to fall back on it. The Sand King was moments too late, unfortunately, and he couldn't actually lock them in place further. And uh, from that kind of position, Q Panda didn't get nearly as much as they intended. We do see flanking in from Jarek onto yeah. Eternal Envy with this TP from the Sand King. No, he's going to TP out in time. Yeah, he, he makes his way out of them. They're really searching for him. They're not sure where he is. They're going to check both bottom and top. Envy, though, he's completely juked them. And uh, Sing Sing still getting space to farm, which is the big thing here. They, the, Q-Pad didn't have the good early start for their carry heroes, the Antimage especially, but they're making space for him now. And with these high-level supports, when they protect him, they protect him pretty damn well. Mm -hmm. So Bone Seven is going to keep on farming up in the jungle. He Bone Seven is one of the few Dark Seer players that picks up the Wall of Replica so darn early. He picks it up, I think, at level six itself. Uh, right now, you see him not even maxing out his Iron Shells. He just wants to commit to the team fights as a whole, which works great because they have that Earthshaker. They have the potential to benefit from so many great AOE abilities. So this skill build, all while unorthodox, I think is really, really doing work for their team as they're able to counter initiate on the issues that they had down on bottom and other situations in the near future, Sing -sing. especially. Taking a Ooh. lot of damage at top, but this is actually going to be turned around. Nope. Nothing well, they're around. looking to it, but... Yeah. Well, I definitely agree that the early wall of replica is, is something which you can make a lot of... If you if you come to the fights as actively as Bone 7 does, it's worth doing. Not to mention, the Arcane Boots build, which he does, gives him the mana he needs to sort of use all four of his skills in these battles. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's it's instrumental because right now, like we mentioned, the the team fights have been drafted for both lines. And if Darkseer isn't out swinging, if he's waiting till level eleven before he drops his first wall, Q Panda is just going to run rampant with some really solid RPs uh, coming out select, and it's some great follow up from the supports in this position here. They need to add that in. Actually, Bane taking a lot of damage yeah, on Medi to fall down. Q Pad find themselves another kill, and they're getting almost one kill a minute here, which is really. Helping them start get a lot of control of this game. They're up by about 2k XP. Gold not quite as big, but once they start getting some towers here, which it gets a lot easier to do when you follow up, follow up a kill with an early tower, then suddenly Cubad are going to start pulling away here, which is something that KP need to be very cautious of. Mm -hmm. So, in this position here, Antimage Sing Sing is working towards his Perseverance. He's going to be going for that Battle Fury. Do you think it's going to be out at a relevant enough time for him to make use of it? I think... 
Anytime you get Battle Fury out, it's worth getting. I don't think there's any real scenarios where you say, okay, let's not go for Battle Fury anymore. Even if it's a 20 minute Battle Fury, you've got to catch up at some point. And once you get the Battle Fury, you start catching up. So I think it's worth still going for this. You'll get some damage and cleave from a Magnus and Power, but with or without that, you want to have the Battle Fury because that's really your main farming tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was definitely thinking the Empower could be a potential replacement, but I, I guess you can consider it a supplement. When you have yeah. Battle Fury and Empower, the second you cluster them together, the second that ultimate from Magnus connects, you're actually going to be able to dish out a ton of damage that you generally don't see from just a single Anti-Mage, but he has great attack speed and great scaling in that regard, and uh, actually getting flanked in. He's in a pretty yeah. bad spot. Rank 3 Blink will be enough. Ooh, doesn't actually get it off. The Blink was there just in time. Can he actually catch up, Bane? He's looking for the grip, not, gonna... not enough movement speed. He's got no boots. No boots at all. Zizu. And Sanking. What? Sanking has a Blink Dagger? Strong. At 14 minutes in, a support Sanking has Arcane Boots and Blink Dagger. That is insane. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous I, when you consider I mean, the, a lot of the times that we've seen Sanking used in professional games previously, you have the Sanking sitting around like level 5 for a, what seems yeah. like an eternity and makes no impact on the game, but this is the opposite. Mini just moving around, he's level 9, he's actually towards the top of uh, what the levels come on through, and Ooh. actually a big team fight break now. Yeah, Mini gonna be caught out in the wrong position, he gets brought down by the Rock Rats. 4 seconds stun on Envy though, Echo Slam actually does decent amount of damage here, but the oh. RP from Select catches 4, Split Earth on cooldown unfortunately, if there was a Split Earth to combo with that, it would be fantastic and now instead it's being turned around KP blink sonic wave scream and queen of pain cleans up darksy actually with the double kill queen of pain only gets one kill out of that but four q panda heroes all take a fall antimage is at bottom farming but what a great fight for KP yeah, in those kinds of engagements, Select is finding the best reverse polarities of his life, but the problem is he's being so paid and patient about it that by the time they happen, the turnaround is already prepared. Kaipi yeah. is ready to answer back with a couple of major abilities, well-timed echoes, well-timed sonic waves, and actually forcing Q-Pandas to cluster up on what would otherwise be a great opportunity. Yeah, they, so, they clutter up around the RP. ES gets off a great Echo Slam. I feel like it's once if they have Split Earth up, they win the fight, but it's not that Leshrac is using his split earth too early it's just that like you say mag is waiting so long to go in Leshrac had to already use his split earth just for the sort of the earlier clashes that happened and as a result they don't have that follow-up sun yeah 100 percent, and that's that's very painful for them like you said sing sing has been farming down in the bot lane and he will be able to pick up uh, the pace really quickly when he does acquire that battle fury but until then yeah they have to make their team fights work for them and if they're feeding away this many kills they're giving kaipi more and more room to spread out a little bit. I mean, Gyrocopter is going to have that BKB at a relatively good time, only 1,200 away from it right now. And once he has that, I mean, the only thing that he really is afraid of is reverse polarity itself and not the follow-up. Yep, and it looks like Cupad are trying to lay a bit of a trap at bottom lane. They've still got this epicenter blink up, so if they can hide themselves well, they may be able to find a fight. Smoke on Earthshaker and Queen of Pain, and they're going to walk right into Cupad, it looks like. They're being pinged. They've seen them with the smoke. Blink, Don't silence. There's an orchid already up on the... On the Queen of Pain uses it on the Sanking and Sanking will back off now, so we're not gonna be seeing an epicenter blink anytime soon. They've seen the blink tagger on Sanking, that's the big thing. They know it's there now. They're not gonna be caught by surprise by it, and they decide not to take the fight, which I think for KP is perfectly reasonable right now. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, one thing that uh, a lot of people don't really respect enough is Sanking with that epicenter blink combo, but it seems the Rise is all more than prepared for it. I mean, you, the Orca is a great tool against almost every single one of these heroes. It can stop the reverse polarity from Magnus in its tracks. You can uh, gank up the Anti-Mage and prevent his blink. Uh, but in this specific scenario, jumping on in and blinking and then orcating, you're kind of playing it like a Storm Spirit, where you jump on in and you just screw over the epicenter, get some damage on him to interrupt the blink, get a silencer or a stun to interrupt the FH channel itself. And from there, Sanking doesn't really contribute as much to the team fight as many other selections would. Yeah, and the other big thing with Sanking, sure he's got this fast blink, but he's still just level 9. The ultimate really gets strong around level 11, because that's where it goes up quite a bit in pulses, and it suddenly becomes a lot more powerful. So right now, Q Panda want to get a few more levels here, also wait things out. They're not really able to even defend this T1 tower of theirs. Leshrac trying to sneak in a deny from the side, doesn't succeed in doing so. Jerek's one of those sneaky little players. He's being chased down now by a Surge Darkseer, but they're not going to be able to find it, find anyone with this. Mm -hmm. Really, really looking for it. Uh, question for you. If it breaks down into Roche teamfights, obviously it hasn't been uh, looked at just yet, but who do you think has the upper hand in a ro full Roshan engagement? <sighs> it's really hard to say. I think it, it depends so much on the position of these heroes, when, when Earthshaker times and places his Fissure, and for Q-Panda, how Sanking and Mag do with their big AoE stuns with the blink initiations. Mag still with no blink dagger. When Mag is a blink, it gets a lot easier for Q-Panda. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, most definitely. That's going to be a really, really big deal. And it's been delayed a lot. I mean, we've talked about how rough a time Select had on that offlane, but it still rings true uh, up to the 18 and a half minute mark that Mag needs his Blink Dagger if he's going to make something happen. And still, they have to delay. They have to just turtle until they're actually ready to fully uh, commit to something. Yeah. Eternal Envy, as well as the rest of KP, are going to back things off now. Envy TPing towards mid. You've got Queen of Pain TPing up top. And Queen of Pain, Fast Orchid is great, but I mentioned the BKB is going to be essential there. I like that he didn't go for it first, because this is giving him a lot more sort of early game involvement. But at some point, he's going to have to get a BKB up to deal with all these stuns and lockdown on the dire side. Mm hmm BKB up for your MV, and that's going to be a really, really big impact. Yeah. Uh, Earthshaker, do you think he's going to go for the full Blink Dagger rush now that he has 1k stored up? Yeah, I think he, I think at this point it looks like Bane is doing most of the warding. Earthshaker can just sort of hold off to that. Maybe, we, I mean, buy some TP scrolls, maybe some smokes here and there, but I don't see any reason for him to pick up anything else as far as items go, apart from the Blink Dagger. This mech is actually pretty big for Bone7. One thing is oh, they've wow. been able to survive out through the reverse polarity over and over and then turn it around after the fact, and that's just going to make it hurt even more so because Q Panda doesn't really have supports that like to go mech. I mean, in the Chinese scene, we do see Magnus pick it up occasionally when he, his farm is solid, uh, but Leshrac, nowhere near. I mean, he could maybe go for drums. Sanging never picks up the mechanism, so honestly, that's a possibility that they'll have that 250 HP heal and armor buff that Q Panda will never acquire this entire game. Yeah, unless we see Mag. We have seen, I've seen a bit of Mag go for it today. Uh, both Empire as well as, I think it was Dignitas in one of their games early did go for that. But we're going to see, oh, mm. Queen of Pain. This is where that lack of BKB can come in to bite you in the ass, is uh, the chain stuns from CK and Sanking get a little pick off here. And that's something that Cupid have sort of been using to keep them in this game and keep them on level footing. At one point they were ahead. Right now it looks like they're very even with KP. These pick offs have just been instrumental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in this situation, with the range of initiation on a blink sanking is something that a lot of people are going to underestimate, and it can cost you. They can even look to Roche at this moment. They have the empower. They have, in general, a great team fight. And with 15 seconds left on Queen of Pain, they might be able to bring it down. But the biggest thing here is vision. This observer ward down in the bottom rune was what scattered out that Queen of Pain pickoff, and uh, now is allowing them to know that they're not being uh, pushed on in. For I mean, the smoke is always possible. So but risky. This observer yeah, ward sees slow. across the river. They, maybe they don't know, but they could at least suspect this, and Roshan's going down so incredibly slow. The smoke gank is oh. going to walk right into him. Antimate isn't even here. Oh, man. They, they back off wisely, so. Darkseer's illusions were not smoked there, so they definitely yeah. saw those two coming on through. Uh, I assume that means that they were understanding that there was plenty going on behind the scenes. And in that situation, they definitely don't want to contest it. Maybe you want to use it as bait a little bit, since it is half HP. It's a little more of a juicy prize for the taking and they could initiate on that but in this spot here it's just something that they can't contest directly mostly because of course Antimage he just now got his battle fury his damage isn't ready to go yet and they're basing a lot of their potential on illusion based carries and of course uh, illusions won't be able to do anything to Roshan himself yeah we do see towers being traded tier 1 goes, goes down at mid for Q Panda while as they take the tier 1 at top although it does get denied there so a slight edge going the way of KP as far as the gold trade there not to mention strategically taking those tier 1 mid towers a lot diff more difficult to do than the side lanes it's it's always just a matter of time until anti mate split pushes a side lane back into Roche though interesting they, they're really keen on this Roshan even though despite the fact they haven't got the fastest team to do it with they just want to take the ages get it as fast as possible and maybe then look for a team fight yeah, a couple of key crits are helping out a ton in this situation, and, and they're actually about to bring it down. I mean, the armlet definitely allows you to keep it going, and they do finish it off. Chaos Knight picking up the Aegis, and uh, yeah, second Chaos Knight. If you wait for your Phantasms to tell round two, the Echo Slam will probably be dropped down, same with the Sonic Wave. And from there, you're actually going to be able to rely on your Phantasms, tanking up the remainder of the incidental damage in order to keep your damage output going on through. So pretty much their intentions are to tank up as many cooldowns with Waga's first life as possible so that on the second coming, they're able to bounce back with big Phantasm Reality Rifts. Yeah, if he can just kill anyone with his first life, it's a great win for Cupad. He'll come back up and just do some real work. He has... Without a BKB, it is quite difficult to do so, um, just because of uh, the nature of this Radiant lineup with Earthshaker, Defensive, Fissures. If you, I mean, you can't really go on him. He's going to be sitting in the back, li back lines, and then the heroes in the front lines are protected by the Bane, by the Earthshaker, by a Darkseer with a Mech. So it's very difficult to find those openings. And I think as a result, we see Cupad play even, even with the Aegis. They play a more farm-based li lineup, even unless they look to f find an opening to go for a tier 2 tower, but I feel like even if they go for tier 2 towers, it's going to come from the split push. They're going to keep going with this 4-1 split. Antimage top, then 3-4 heroes either middle or bottom. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and the longer they drag out this game, the better advantage they're going to have. Uh, Gyrocopter is really good against these two heroes for quite some time, but the fact that they do have that dual core and plenty of lockdown potential, I mean, of course, you could look at long term and say, okay, somebody's going to have an Abyssal Blade eventually. They have a lot of opportunities to try to just completely dissolve his potential uh, by having the numbers advantage, quite literally, with all these phantasms and uh, illusions. But yeah, if they don't have to worry about the flat cannon, they can pierce right on through. Right now, Gyrocopter hasn't been going for a farm oriented build. He's picked up a BKB and a Dominator. He He's able to do a lot. They might be able to farm out the Ancients pretty readily if his supports get on that or if he stacks it up with the neutral that he some possesses. But nevertheless, he's building for fights and they're building for farm with so much speed through that Battle Fury and uh, Yasha. Antimage can pretty much farm faster than any here on the map. Yeah, Antimage is going to start pulling away of this Gyrocopter by quite a margin, I imagine. Right now, they well, Gyrocopter's ahead by 1k net worth, but I don't know how, how much longer that's going to be lasting. Antimage playing things safe here in the trees at the top lane, just worried about all these heroes missing on the map. He'll soon realize that they're not actually... Uh, trying to gank him. We'll see if you at mid. Bone Seven did go for that blink dagger you mentioned, so we'll be seeing that blink initiation from him. Yeah, that's so darn uh, high potential. He has a maxed out vacuum, so blink in, vacuum them all together, blink in on the Earthshaker, which is also ready and available. Just now picked up Pylidae. You're going to have uh, one amazing Echo Slam coming out. Still level 10, so he doesn't have the second rank in it, but it's, it's, either way, an Echo Slam is an Echo Slam. It's going to yeah. do a lot of damage here. Sing Sing's been spending like the last two minutes in these trees at the top lane. He's just so worried about getting ganked, and with, with the Blink Daggers up on someone like an Earthshaker and a Bane's Fiend's Grip, there is potential for him to get picked off very, very easily so mm -hmm. i don't blame him but i feel like he should be should have been spending that time in the neutrals rather than sitting around by that secret shop not farming anything it was a bit of a wasted time and wasted well farming opportunity for him mm -hmm. Yeah, but on the other hand, if they were trying to smoke gank up since yeah. they were off the map, the, the, the jungle would be the first place they'd head to, and that could be really bad for him. Uh, because until the Mantis style comes out, that Orchid, it could just completely shut him down. Where he gets Orchided, suddenly he can't blink, and then everybody else follows up, and they get the stuns subsequently. So it's a difficult decision to make. Of course, you want to be on top of farm, but Singh just biting the bullet because he didn't know what was going on outside the... The, the Fog of War curtain. Yeah, it's actually a really good point. There's so many ways to kill Antimates before he has this Mantis style. It's it's so easy to, I mean, Fiend's Grip, when he has the Mantis up, just that confusion factor makes it a lot harder. The Orchid, you've got just all this single target burst damage coming out from KP and single target lockdown. So, Cupat, gonna play things safe. Antimates has actually gone into the, the enemy jungle now where he feels it's a lot safer, and rightfully so, because KP are roaming through the dire jungle. T2 tower bottom could actually be pressured a bit here. There's just a, a gyrocopter there for the moment with a BKB, but it looks like they want to play things safe. Back off, farm up the ancients for Sing Sing, get his Mantisel up as the number one priority. Mm -hmm. So BKB will come out for Queen of Pain, but it is a long time coming, so until then they're just relying on their initiation. They want to be the people to start it off. Uh, Jarek's can te technically counter-initiate extremely well, uh, but based on the fact that they have a bunch of ranged heroes, uh, they're really not going to be putting too many people into the fire. Gyrocopter has enough range that I think that he can avoid uh, the ultimate of the Magnus if he puts himself in the right position. And uh, from there, I feel that they can just go on and go for the initiation, go for the vacuum, and go for the Echo Slam, and just follow it up with taking a couple of heroes down really, really quickly. In that sense, they don't necessarily need the BKB on Queen of Pain yet, uh, but it will become more and more of a factor later on. Well, I love this. <laughs> well, I, 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 I kind of like it, but it's not really achieving a whole lot right now. We've got KP with three heroes sitting in the trees, waiting patiently. Unfortunately, no one's coming. Nope. CK was there farming. He's actually going to TP bottom. Not because he's afraid. I don't even think this is because he's afraid of being ganked. This is just because he wants to join up with his team for a team fight. He's got the ages. They want to yeah. get aggressive in bottom lane. And top lane is really anti mages territory right now. So they're still waiting. They see the anti mage though. They see him coming towards his top Ooh. lane. So their patience may actually pay off. Yeah, going on in. They have all the potential yeah. in the world to just blink Orchid. on top of him, go for that Orchid. It's hard based on the creep wave to actually make this work since they don't have a smoke on them. But uh, it's still. Way. Yeah, unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, but one thing to mention is, uh, yeah, Waga really, really wanted to group up with his team. The main reason, I think, is because that Aegis is about to expire. He's got about maybe 40 seconds left on that thing. Blink right into him. Orchid, oh, Fisher, bad. He's actually dodged Fisher everything. Misses. He's fine. The Orchid was wasted. Fissure didn't land. Actually, no, there's there a the rotation was there. I didn't actually see the two supports coming in. Sanking going to come in with a two hero Bar Strike. He's got to get the hell out of there. May actually pay for this with his life. Sentry Ward gets dropped, but nice play by Mini. Immediately walks away after Sandstorming. There is that fade time there. Fisher's going to find him, and this will be the death of, death of Sanking. So. Counter push at bottom lane. Unfortunately for Antimate Sing Sing, is he, he walked back into him, and that's where 
If you sit there long enough, eventually something will come your way, if you're in KP's sake. Exactly. And that's where he's like, oh man, I should just hit in the trees for three more minutes. Yeah. But anyways. Uh, yeah, the tower does fall on bottom. Force, fortification forced out by both teams, but it looks like it's just going to be a one for one tier two trade. Yeah, I don't see him defending. There's still actually time for KP to maybe look to put some pressure on this tier three. And I think as a result, we see the same Q thing happening the same. on Q pad. Q pushed a lot faster. There's no glyph. Look at this edict and these illusions just tear apart this tier three. And I think KP quickly realized we've got to get the hell back. Earthshaker, Blink, Totem. He's maybe going to bring down Wagamama. Wagamama still has this Aegis here. Dax is going to drop the wall. No, he doesn't. He lost yeah, the Aegis. Totally it expired. Oh, man. So they lost the tier three, but they also lost Wagamama. How do you feel about that exchange? I think it's okay. If you're Q Panda, you say, well, look at that. look at the amount of pressure we get. They get enough gold sort of to make up for the kill they lose. And right now, well, I guess just that sort of two position carry. Antimage is the, the main hero they want to give space to. And that forced so many heroes back towards the bottom lane, which opens up the entire Dio neutrals, makes them safe to farm. Not to mention this top lane, although top lane already very far pushed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just keeps on pushing that way. I mean, you saw how fast those phantasms with the armored active just chewed on through the tower, and pretty much any usage of fortification is going to be dangerous. It's not like we have a lone druid to work with here, but still, Manta style coming up, and those phantasms, they can definitely do work in the short uh, time they have their limited lifespan. I uh, have been able to kind of poke and prod and siege Hodge Ground without actually threatening the carries themselves. Well, Antimage has his Manta B Fury now, so we'll see how Qpad look to, to move on out from here. Earthshaker with a blink dagger of his own, so it's 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 a battle of these big AoE teamfight heroes with the blink Earthshaker, the blink on the mag as well as Sanking, and it's all going to come down to tanking up, getting items like BKB for both these two teams. Uh -oh, <laughs> they found Earthshaker, Queen of Pain going to go blinking for a counter, she's Echo Slam is there, Sinks and he's silenced, he's already used wow. Mantisol and he's brought down. Mantisol was... It I think he used it when, for, looking for the kill and then Queen of Pain finds the real one with relative ease and they're going to find Leshrek as well. Yeah. Great counter gank from KP. Strong. I mean, that's three for zero, 100%. They just turned it around, absolutely. And they knew that they didn't have the full force of Q Panda. I mean, they had a couple other heroes on the map, and Edge Select was farming up on the creep wave, and I believe Waga was too at the same time. So they felt confident. They jumped on in. They have this opportunity to blink in and make them pay for overextending themselves. So they almost got one kill, but they threw away three and didn't get anything out of it. So that puts a lot more money on the board for Kaipi, and Eternal Envy is going to have to do something with it pretty soon. 5,300 gold sword up. Uh, do you think he's desperate enough to go for a Divine or just wants to lay the groundwork with an MKB? I think it's MKB. Uh, either that or a Butterfly. The Butterfly is not a bad option, although sure. his damage will be... Uh, you've got damage coming... Well, I guess not much damage coming from anywhere else, but he's already got sitting around the 200 damage mark with just his current items. So I think it's an okay choice to go for a Butterfly. But I think MKB, probably the best option here for damage because CK and Antimage both very fairly tanky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hard to bring all those different individuals down, and like we said, there's a lot of emphasis on the illusions, but he's going to go for Butterfly, and I can't complain about that. The evasion is, oh, he just changed his mind. Sold the Talisman as soon as he picked it up. Either way, um, he has the potential to go Butterfly, and there is a lot that can be said about that. I mean, 35% evasion, reducing all that physical damage, it's going to allow him to stay alive long enough to get possibly a second flat cannon off, which is immense. He has life still. He has a, still a full 10 seconds BKB. He's had that the entire game and still has yet to use it. But uh, when he does, he's going to do it in a desperate situation where he just needs to be able to survive. And if he does have Butterfly, that shouldn't be a problem. Well, and now we're getting, the big worry for Q Panda here is you've got BKB up on the, the Queen of Pain, your level 4 team. So there's a lot of damage output coming there. And sure, you've got a Mag RP to go through. The BKB, but it just doesn't feel like well, Mag's had much luck getting these RPs off. He, he can get silenced up, he's been chain stunned, and we haven't really seen a whole lot from this select Mag. He has played badly this game, it's just been KP playing around the fact there's a Magnus on the other side. Mm -hmm. So, this is putting them in an interesting position where they haven't really engaged for a full 5-on-5, five five, which is awkward for both teams, because both teams are ready to go. They have big ultimates, they have great wombo combo uh, potential initiations, and I think both teams are prepared, but they're also concerned because of the massive amount of potential that the other side has. So both of them kind of want to make sure that they're getting just the picks and not going in for a full 5v5, because when that comes into play, it's anybody's game. There's so much potential to throw it back in the other team's face. Yeah, and with that with that turnaround potential, I think both teams are deciding rather than risk, whoever initiates is the one putting themselves at risk for that counter initiation. So both teams are saying, hey, let's just sit back and farm. Definitely a smart decision for QPAD considering the nature of their lineup with the two the two good late game carries, Antimage especially. CK, if he gets the farm, which he has been doing, Armlet, BKB, Treads, Drums, um, does scale well to the late game, especially once he hits that level 16. So 
I think this is okay way for Cubed to be playing things. It's just KP who are getting the more recent pickoffs and a ton of farm on the gyrocopter as Butterfly is completed very, very soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they should be warding these Ancients much more aggressively. The fact that they have no idea about Eternal Envy's position is uh, very unfortunate for them. They get a nice ward up towards the top, above the tier two, and Mini's kind of moving on around uh, and trying to just link in through, finding a good opportunity. But either way, yeah, I, if they, he just keeps on farming these Ancients away, he's gonna find that he actually does have that Butterfly in full. And uh, he's going to find even big, bigger and better items. Yeah. Cupad, well, where do they look to go from here? They've got three heroes grouped up near bottom. One at mid, one at top. It looks like they're starting to get some map control. Maybe look for a, a smoke gank at some point in the near future. But for the time being, things have sort of settled down for them, so to speak. They're not looking to sort of take five. I don't know about that. Jumping down in. Yeah, mini. Goodbye. With that, I think KP are actually just marching Did down the middle lane with this butterfly pickup for Envy. Oh, Roshan's Roche respawned. Roshan and Just push. came up. And... Taking this fight, not really possible for Q-Pandas. Antimage wants to split push, Sanking dead. It's It doesn't seem to be happening. Mm -hmm. And they didn't force out any ultimates on, on yeah. bring down the Sanking. They just popped off the Orchid and got the damage in so he couldn't blink away. And from there, they had complete control. So in this position here, I don't know. Without the Sanking up the center, it feels like they would just be impossible to actually see this area and actually your getting cut off yeah they're gonna i love what kp do they they go scouting out for the kills they leave envy to solo roshan they know it's safe to roshan because and they see antimage at top antimage oh, he's gonna get the top, top tier two tower makes it to tp and count and try to contest this roshan now but it looks like it's gonna be too late anyway so envy gonna get himself an aegis and whenever there's an aegis on a gyrocopter you can always consider that divine rapier although by the time he farms that up he's probably gonna have the aegis almost expired sure yeah, it does take a little bit of time there. His GPM is solid at 475, but it's not going to be consistent enough to actually pick up a big item like that. Nevertheless, I don't think he is in a, a too concerned of a position. Like I said, until the Bashers and Abyss Abyssals come out, actually, Waga, really bad. They oh, did get the pick off on mid lane there. They just, I mean, essentially it was just him not respecting how close they could be. They did walk back on into their jungle, but then immediately said, hey, we'll go to the mid lane, jump on in with Mini. a Fisher to start it off, and a big, big Echo Slam as well. Mini's being really risky with his positioning here on the high ground. Not going to make anything too much happen. He's just trying to stay hidden in case they go for that T1 tower push. Problem is, there's a Radium Observer Ward right by his position. If he pokes his head out, he'll get spotted very, very fast. Antimate, he's doing his best to counter push at the top lane, which I think right now is better than trying to come to this fight. Yeah, he's in a great position for Epicenter, but that ward is even better. It's going to expire in just 15 seconds, but right now they see him. They actually just barely caught sight of him, I think, uh, looking at Radiant Perspective. He's like, his head's poking out of the, the darkness. I don't know. But anyways, Tier 3 falls, and uh, they're going to have to make a move in a very, very short period. The positioning from KP right now, it's Envy on the high ground with the Aegis Butterfly. He just goes to town on these racks. There is going to be Mini blinking. He actually gets silenced as he blinks, and now he's going to be brought down. Mini just gets completely obliterated. Antimate, what's he up to? Going for a Tier 3 tower, but pushing nowhere near as fast as his KP side. KP, it looks like they'll get the racks, then they'll TP back to defend. CK, gonna go in with a Phantasm. KP, KP. enough damage, gets dodged. The Chaos Ball gets dodged by Envy. He will get RP'd here, but he's in BKB form. He's just too damn tanky. They don't have the damage to bring him down. Select's gonna take a fall. Looks like we will see Raxes at mid go down. Can't Sing do the same at top. Two TP's coming. It looks like he's only gonna get the tier 3 tower. Melee Rax mm -hmm. at mid is fallen. Zizu gonna take a fall, though. He'll pay the price for it, but well Happy executed. Happy to do so. Mm -hmm. That BKB timing was just 100% perfect. The Gyrocopter could have eaten four seconds of Disable, and the fact that he was able to avoid that midair meant that the damage wouldn't come in from the reverse polarity, and from there, honestly didn't care less, because Waga wasn't prepared to go in all in with all his Phantasms, and Sing Sing, of course, was preoccupied on that top lane. So in that situation, really, really uh, good timing from Eternal Envy, yeah. and they easily take up one Rax, which is, of course... Uh, really the foothold they're looking for to move on in uh, towards a successful late game. Yeah, they do put themselves under a bit of pressure with having both T3 tower at top and bottom down. So if they lose a fight or if there's split push happening from anti-mage, it'll happen a lot faster considering there's no tower there. But Envy's BKB timing wins him a fight, gets him a melee rax in. I imagine he's picking up a demon edge here. Yeah, he picks up a demon edge. So could be either the MKB or Divine Rapier. I imagine at this point he's just considering going for the MKB, especially if he sees something like a butterfly standing on Sing Sing. But... Yes. I, either way, I think MKB is just, you're not really behind yet. You don't need to go for something big and risky like a Divine Rapier. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sing Sing not feeling comfortable in that position. Just TP's on down. He's got a farm, farm, farm. That's pretty much his yeah. main thing. Is He's got this checklist, and the first five uh, to-dos are farm, 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 farm. And then uh, 
proceed with a, a little bit of split push annoyance before a team fight could even cross his mind. And he's actually going to pick up a reaver, move in for that heart very, very quickly. Oh, no. Need to oh, no, back. switch it up. Switch it up. I'm us. watching. I'm, I'm, it's always the, the big decision. After you get your battle for your mantid, you go for, that's, that's your standard first two items. It's your third item where some people go heart, some people go butterfly. And he's going for the butterfly. This is going to make the, the MKB on Gyrocopter that much better. Exactly. If the MKB comes out for Eternal Envy, if he does offer that, which he definitely should, considering he's a Gyrocopter up against an Anti-Mage, then yeah, this not it's not going to be a worthless pick, but a large amount of that item's utility is going to be completely nullified here. And they do continue to try to go for that base race. Again, the Tier 3 has fallen on the bottom lane, so they have some potential there, but I'm not sure if it's enough. I think, I mean, that's really their game plan from here on out. Go for split push and counter push and just try and trade Raxes, or at least when your opponents are pushing, try push out the two other lanes they're not pushing. Which, for KP, they don't really have to push me anymore with the melee racks down. They, they would like the range racks down, but they're not too concerned. So, Cupid are doing a good job. I, that's why the, this, way this butterfly build for Antimage is slightly stronger, because it's a better pushing item. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. It benefits you a lot in a bunch of different regards, but they want to get big damage on the Gyrocopter. When he's immune to magic, you have to offer physical, and buffing up the Manta Illusions as well as yourself is definitely a great way to get that accomplished. And so he'll have that finished up right this very second. And also, refresh your recipe for Select. He doesn't have the Perseverance yet, though, so... Uh, just a, a few hundred gold shy of that. You can even sell his bottle if he wants you to get enough gold. Yeah, he does just that. Sells his bottle, picks up the refresher. Be a bit mana stuff, but if you do it, if you do it well, you ulti, you arcane boot, you refresh, you have an arcane boot again, and then you can use your second ulti. So you have got the mana for it with the arcane boots, and not to mention some magic on charges. But this is this is going to be a key for him. He's got he can use one RP just on envy, but his second RP you need you feel like he needs to catch more than just envy here. They can't use it like the last fight only on envy because envy. If his BKB is up when he gets RP, he d there's not enough real physical damage to bring him down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much they need these two RPs. If they don't have a double RP and a really good ones at that, I kind of feel like they're just kind of scrambling right now, especially since Chaos Knight hasn't picked up any major items in quite some time. He's got a BKB, a drum, and an armlet. Those are great and are going to allow him to do a lot, but I don't think it's enough. At this stage, he still needs more, more, more damage. And unless he looks out on a couple of those 10% chance crits, it's going to be not enough damage to oh, directly deal with Sing Sing. There's a hex. Bone 7 has a hex. He's gone on Sing Sing. He is going to be able... It looks like he's got enough survivability to get out of this one. There is going to be a fissure. A Ryze going to chase him. Sonic Wave being bought. The physical damage, the evasion. Oh. He dodged the that. Last oh, man. The evasion almost saved his life there. He dodged that last physical attack, but the, the damage over time finished him off. And he just bought his butterfly. This is 70 seconds with the mage KP uh -huh. have got to be thinking. Let's push, push, push. Anti-Mage is dead. 60 seconds. They've got Envy pushing up mid lane. He's got his MKB up now. He's still got Aegis. No, he hasn't really got Aegis. It's going to be... Exp Aegis expired that yeah. very second, so... We're going to see them push, I think, with or without Aegis anyways, if they can get there before the Antimage respawns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, no buyback. That's just very, very unfortunate for him because he really wanted the Butterfly, understandably, but in this position here, they see it, they kill him, and plenty of time for him to queue up that MKB. So he already has that in route to him, and they can easily try to force, but the, where, the question is to add it to what end. I mean, if you push out in the mid and then you just take a rain tracks, do you feel like you've really accomplished very much? Yeah, I, I don't think... That, I mean, it's, it's a small achievement, but it's not really going to be enough. They need to go through mid, also get either top or bottom, but they're going to have to be ready to defend bottom lane, because Wagamam is leading the charge there. He's got level 3 Phantasm with an armlet, so he does quite a decent amount of damage, and Envy is going to go for the rain tracks, so we either see them go rain tracks and TP, or they're going to go rain tracks and then look to... Uh, Go for another lane. They're going to just TP back. Yeah, they don't need to lose bottom just yeah. to try to put some pressure out on top. Of the, they will actually see the Phantasms coming in just ready to right-click away. And the response isn't there just yet. Earthshaker and Bone7 are finally here, but uh, they will at least take a few hits of damage on their racks before finishing it off. Nothing that won't be healed up by the next by the time the next push comes in. So, Gyrocop the Envy is there. Maybe we see even Boots of Travel as his next item because of the amount of split push coming out. It really feels like he needs to be the one defending these lanes and then TPing into the, into the fight, into the, the push which is coming from KP. Yeah, it's all on select right here. He has performed okay in the previous ones, but the, the timing needs to be perfect. Yeah. The positioning, of course, needs to be just as good as before. And, of course, he has two ultimates up his sleeve to make that happen. So he definitely has a lot on his shoulders here. And although uh, the Q Panda can still wait it out a little bit longer, if the heart comes out for Sing Sing and then he moves in towards an Abyssal, he will be able to directly contest a Gyrocopter. But until then, uh, it's a lot of items that he needs to pick up to be able to survive against this team as a whole. Yeah, I mean, you look... We're looking at only a 5k gold lead for 41 minutes, which is pretty small. There's yeah. a Rax, one Rax advantage, which is also, for 41 minutes, not that bad. And you look at Q Panda, you've got two carries in CK Antimage. You've got Empower Damage from Mag. You've got Mag with double RP. Their late game is pretty scary. Yeah. 
But they're going right on through the mid, looking yeah. at these top buildings as soon as they group together. Oh, BKB on Earthshaker. They are persist positioning themselves very well against this oh, uh, Magnus and actually jumping on in. It's not really the best wall of Repkis looking for the Maggie. Max have a blink RP soon. Sing Sing is looking to bring down here. They brought down the Darks already. Earthshaker, he's used his BKB, doesn't get anything with his Echo Slam. Terrible, terrible engagement coming in from KP. They will manage to fin finish off the Chaos Knight in the sides here with the help of the Queen of Pain and Antime just going to town. Roll that one, looking for a second oh, RP. Big, I, just on so MP. Big. Can they actually bring he him down? It looks like there's second RP. Two yeah, RPs just like... on him. Queen of Pain gonna be the only survivor here, and only barely. That mm, was just that was close. and look at top lane. Is there boots to travel? Anti-mage. Sell treads, get boots to travel. No Jarakov to buy back. Ah, uh, yeah, unfortunately, the gyrocopter will dissuade them from going in, trying to man mode Rampo I'm on the racks. Queen of Pain spam pings on this wall of Repka. That was what let them. Darkseid came in through mid lane. He, he avoided the siege on the tower, which was the problem. They just had to siege the tower. Darkseid went for something fancy. He tried to get a vacuum wall at the back lines. He only caught the mag. Mm -hmm. And then I believe there was what? A follow. Urshaker was the other one. He BKB, tried to walk in to get an Echo Slam, did zero damage as well. That was just a catastrophe for KP. Yeah. Very, very unfortunate in that kind of positioning. The, the Bone 7 wall brother that did very little. It didn't catch either of the two carries. The one blinked over and Waga wasn't even that kind of position to tank it in the first place. So it was a good initiation to an extent of getting the sheep stake off on Magnus, but obviously the rest of Kaipi weren't on the same page. They weren't able to bring down Select before either RP came out. He was able to just walk on out of it while the carries tanked up on the front line. And then him coming on through to follow it up. Uh, right at the nick of time, making sure Sing Sing didn't get dropped down to the gyrocopter. Uh, just put them in a great place to really, really turn things around nicely because they are now uh, almost equaled out on kills, and we see very, very quickly, especially the experience graph, going back towards zero. Yeah, things are almost dead even as far as golden experience. Gold, 1 to 2k advantage is not really all that significant right now. The next big thing is going to be this Roshan, which has just respawned. This time it's Cheese and Aegis. Yeah. And both teams will be eyeing that one off, especially maybe this Radiant team, considering they've got the Gyrocopter, who could go for that late game Divine Rapier, although he hasn't really got space for it. He'd have to use that TP spot for his Aegis, so it doesn't actually have space for the Divine Rapier. He may consider later on if things get really desperate, but right now, KP still at worst on level footing, and considering they've got that one rack, you can look at them as being with a slight advantage, at least yeah. positionally, with these lanes pushing out. Trying to bait with Sing Sing, he's the only one outside of Smoke pushing out the lane, but they know something's up, they know yeah. something in this general area, and they're gonna swoop on in. Smoke dispels? No, not on Waga, so he actually, they don't know. This positioning from Eternal Envy is really good, they don't have Smoke dispelled, they think the Roche Pit is empty. And look at these three heroes, Arise on the hill, Earthshaker split away, Zizu also split away. These three heroes are so, they're, everyone's so evenly placed. This is perfect. Uh, if they can wait, let's see how patient Q Pandas is. Because if they let this drop, oh, here comes Min Mini. Oh, he jumps on gosh. in. Perfect timing. MB now. We're going to see Roshan get ignored. Let's oh, go for Roshan. Wow. And there's a huge combo. Oh, are you oh, kidding oh, me? Oh. Sing Sing. What a team fight. I can't I believe my have eyes. Words for that. that was ridiculous. I did the battery plus in power. That was gorgeous. Dear God, it's beautiful. I, di I didn't even have to commentate anything because that fight was over in half a second. <laughs> All I had to do was just squeal in excitement. Wow. And that was one RP. <laughs> <laughs> Dropped the hammer twice, I, like, didn't need For a millisecond, I wanted to see what Leshrek finish off Roshan, and then I'm like, in the corner of my eye, I see that the, uh, the RP come out. I'm like, like whoa, okay, no, no, not happening. That was one of those things which was just fucking insane. I don't know. Need a dodge of that. Need a dodge of that hard. Holy schmoly. GG. Okay. It, well, it looks GG. Oh, maybe not. We're looking at, at most maybe four Raxes. Maybe, maybe, maybe three lanes. Sing Sing is pushing pretty damn fast. True. This is at least two lanes and it looks like three lanes and it's GG. Holy crap. There we go. That's game. <laughs> they literally have one more Rax to go. Gyrocopter not up for 20 seconds. I mean, Gyrocopter uh, could go for the Divine Rapier, let's beat Mega Creeps kind of thing, but yeah. I just don't see it happening. He doesn't have the cash really yeah. for it right now. They just need to right-click down this Rax, but they're actually going on Bone 7 here. Which is, I think it's okay if you get the kills and you follow up with Rax as well. There we go. Easy Mana Void kill. Didn't even need the Mana Void for that last fight. Yeah, Earthshaker could get a decent Echo Slam off. May actually buy his team some time if they can bring down Mag, but all these heroes after getting three lanes of Raxes are going to have buybacks. Here comes Eternal Lambi. He brings down one, but there's an Aegis there on yeah. Antimates. He's going to be respawning momentarily. We'll finish off this Earthshaker. There's the Blink there. He makes it go on him. Earthshaker gets brought down. Could have actually blinked out, I think, there, but... Q Pandas lose a couple and oh my gosh. Well, oh. They got what they were looking for. They popped off the cheese on Waga. They yeah. used the Aegis on Sing. They bought themselves enough time to clean up a number of heroes and all six racks. All right. And now, yeah, that's essentially it. I mean, they have 
the sl sliver of hope with the fact they have a gyrocopter up against Mega Creeps, but oh, well, at least Eternal Lamp got the kill on Maga. He thought he was going to chaos bolt him, but immediately BKBs. I'm going to I'm gonna chill because I, I want to watch out. Okay, it's just happened. Our chat just fucking explodes. <laughs> like, I don't even know, man. That is just the most ridiculous thing I've seen in all of Dota 2. I've been somewhat just zoning out for the last 20 seconds waiting for our chat to catch up. <laughs> like, that is just ridiculous. Oh, dear. That... That's going to be the fastest team fight in Dota 2 history. Just about. Considering the minute timing, yeah, I mean, everybody had plenty of HP to work with there, but yeah. fuck no. The, the fastest rampage. I, I wonder how many times he actually swung. At most, it was maybe three, four times? Because all these yeah. rating heroes are pretty squishy. What, mm -hmm. 1800 HP is the highest on the gyrocopter? The evasion doesn't help when it's cleave damage. And he got bonus damage. I think he goes bonus damage, 35% from... His B Fury empowers what? Another 40? Okay, not quite bonus. He gets 85% cleave. They're gonna go for an all-in here. Eternal Envy picks up a Mask of Madness. Okay. They'd want it's this so bad. Yeah, it's... yeah this, I mean, it will be over in about approximately one minute. This is exactly one what they or another. have to do. And right now, the double RP is up. So we'll see how it plays out. One RP down. Envy. Can they bring him down? If, if he's, he's dead. I don't know if they have any enough damage to bring him down. Eternal Envy, though, he keeps himself alive a bit longer, but not long enough. Sing Sing once again just going completely mad. Earthshaker Echo Slam not going to do enough. Sing Sing, well, this has just been... He, he's made a great comeback here. Yep, that was it. I mean, once that the, well, that Roche fight, lit, of course, sealed it. I mean, something that beautiful can't not, like, si seal the fate of a game. That's just... It was amazing. It really was. That has been... I mean, this 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 day has just been, like, the sure. craziest games from we play we've had. Like, as far as a group stage, every series so far has gone to three games. You mentioned you had some crazy tiny game with Dignitas. There were mm -hmm. some of the games in the series I was casting, which are absolutely amazing, and now we get this beauty. Yeah. Well... well Man, I feel like, you know how they have those, like, artistic sort of video makers who, like, I remember they, they had, like, the play from the International, which was put in, like, sure. super slow motion. I feel like that fight there needs to put in, like, the super, super slow motion, where it's, like, put it, like, yeah. onto, like, a musical soundtrack with, like, Beethoven yeah. playing or something. The problem is there weren't that many graphic effects. There's no macro pyre. There's no Ravage coming out. It's That's just true. literally what two things happen. The best RP in the world, the uh, super animated cleaves, everybody's dead. So slow motion would be good, but the 1,000 frames per second or whatever might be a bit much. Yeah. Well, it'll be a lot of corpses everywhere. But anyways, guys, that's going to conclude things for game number one here in our second third place decider of Group C. Quick pop open of the brackets here. We can see QPAD and KP fighting over second place. Dignitas have already won the group. Winner of this series advances in second place to the round of eight playoffs right now. QPAD in a momentous comeback have taken game number one we'll be back soon with game number two i'm gods from beyond the summit you can follow me on twitter twitter.com slash bts gods and joining me has been blaze who's done casting for tpl and now doing some casting for beyond the summit he's on twitter at twitter.com slash blaze casting thanks everybody we'll be back soon with game number two thanks guys